All right, let's talk about the throttle plate. Where'd you get C from? What? Where'd you get C from? Uh, because we were like, I don't know. Yeah, this is all six. I thought it was six. Yeah, it was six. It was well, eight. six was just in it. Oh, okay. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, throttle plate. Uh, it is a butterfly type valve, even though it really doesn't look much like a butterfly. And butterflies really don't taste like butter. It's things I've learned. <laughs> All right, so when it is closed, that restricts airflow. Uh, it doesn't restrict it completely because if it completely and totally blocked off air, what would happen? Engine is die. Engine is not going to work because it needs roughly 15 parts of air to one part of fuel. If you can't get any air, then that's just not going to work. But it does restrict the airflow, and you will get airflow around the edges of that butterfly valve. And some uh, valves have a hole or two drilled in the top of them that will aid in a little bit of air coming through. But otherwise, it uh, goes around the edge. Uh, restricts air flow, which then restricts the fuel, because if you can't get air flow across the venturi, then you're not going to get flow out of the main nozzle. You'll get it out of the idle circuit, which we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, restricts air flow, um, and that would be closed. Closed equals slow, slash idle, or we have the open position, or in between. Open. Um, the maximum air and fuel. So if the the throttle valve is all the way open, what is the limiting factor for how much air and fuel are going to get into the engine? Venturi. That is correct. The venturi. Fast. All right. So let's talk about the idle circuit. Can I move this? Slow and fast, are we referring to like RPM or? Yes, RPM. Because okay. if you're on the ground and the brakes are set, then I don't know what speed the airplane's going. All right, idle circuit. And remember I said there are two distinct circuits to the carburetor. And what are those two circuits? Idle and off idle. Or I could say idle and not idle, because when it's in the idle circuit, everything is reconfigured. And fuel comes out of different passages, air goes a different route. Uh, and then when you start opening up the throttle plate, and then it transitions to the, the main system. So idle circuit. Uh, when the throttle is closed... Idle position. Very little air is flowing and the Venturi is ineffective. Thus, we got to find a different way to get air and fuel to the carburetor because the Venturi is no longer working. So, when the throttle is closed in the idle position, very little air is flowing. The Venturi is ineffective. That's why we need an idle circuit. So during normal operation, the air flows through the Venturi. Bernoulli's principle says that the air velocity through the Venturi is going to increase, which means that we're going to get a pressure decrease. Thus, we get a low pressure, which then draws the fuel out of the float chamber into the main discharge nozzle. Well, if we don't have a Venturi, we got to find some other source to pull air out. And what do you suppose that is? The idle tube. The what? Idle tube. Uh, well, what's, we have to create a low pressure. Oh, well. And, well, thankfully, we have a natural source of low pressure. When the throttle plate is closed, 
and those big old pistons are going back and forth every time the intake valve opens and that piston comes back on its intake stroke, it wants what? Air. It wants air. And are we going to give it any? Nope. Close the throttle valve. Oh, we have these tiny little openings around there. So what's going to happen to the pressure between that throttle valve and the piston? It's going to be a suction. It's going to be much lower than atmospheric pressure. So we've got a vacuum right there. So we've created a vacuum just by closing the throttle plate and letting the pistons do their thing. So it's a natural, uh, natural vacuum. Not natural, but it creates a vacuum. When, oops, when, the, when the throttle plate is closed, the displacement of the pistons creates a low pressure. Now we could say vacuum. In the manifold. What's the manifold? Intake manifold. Intake manifold. What's an intake manifold? The what the air and fuel to the That's what it's, what's delivering the fuel and air from the cylinders. We could define it from everything from the throttle plate to the intake valve. So all of that is the intake manifold. So it creates a low pressure in the manifold. Let me see. And we can say we use this vacuum to draw out the fuel and air. From orifices that are above the throttle. <coughs> so, in other words, you dare go to the mess. Here's my throttle plate, and right now I've got one even with the throttle plate, one below the throttle plate, and one above the throttle plate. So in this case right here, fuel is, and air are, is going to come up, and because this is all very low pressure, this is my intake manifold, it's under a vacuum, it's going to suck fuel out right <coughs> past this little needle and out. And probably the way I've drawn this, because this is in line with the throttle plate, all of this air is actually coming through like this. And what have I created right there in that little spot? Venturi. There's a Venturi right there. So right there is going to be very low pressure. So it's going to be drawing air and fuel out right there too. So I've got two of them working. Now this one right here is not doing anything until I start to open the throttle a little bit more. And when I open the throttle a little bit more, it's going to uncover that port and then it starts working. But until then, this is just regular atmospheric air, the same as it's over here. And so because those two are equal, nothing's going to come out of here. So that's why you'll see two or three. It's a transition. So as that throttle plate starts opening and more air starts going into the engine and the engine RPM speeds up, I've already maxed out this port. I've maxed out this port. And so if I don't do something as I open the uh, throttle valve, it's going to go lean. And so we got to even out the mixtures, or not even it out, but we have to better the mixture. So we'll add some more fuel out of this one. Yeah. What, what if the uh, throttle plate is like opening to the second one? Right here? Uh, no, the next one down. There? Yeah, but it's like in the middle. Right here in the middle yeah. of it? Yeah. Then it's going to create a venturi across there and still suck it out. Okay. So initially it would actually <coughs> um, suck a little bit of air until the fuel and um, air mixture kind of reaches the outlet, right? Because both of the holes in the um, Stromberg are actually sitting above the fuel level. Not the fuel level. 
Oh, yes. So the fuel, you're actually talking about the fuel level here? Uh -huh. Yeah, it's the same way it draws it way up. Yeah. It goes a long way up. Mm -hmm. Did I miss the question? No. So it does. I, I, it draws. Was, I, was, I was just kind of. Yeah, it draws. I, I never thought about it when we kind of looked at it, but you first actually have the air, so it sucks out the air, and yep. then it kind of sucks. Oh, yeah. So initially, your fuel level is only going to be right, right in this area right here. Right. And so, yes, this is all air. It's got to suck it all the way up there like that. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's a lot of suction, and it's not a lot of fluid. Okay. All right, fuel and air for is above the throttle plate. Let me see what else. Well, I kind of said that right there. Um, well, it's actually three. One, two, three is my point. Just to make sure that we stay on track. Three. Um, some carbs. Utilize air flowing past the throttle plate to create the venturi to pull out fuel. So right when that throttle plate's aimed right at a hole, there's a little venturi there. It'll pull out some of the fuel. All right, so let's take a look at some of the parts. Pass, pass the throttle into the vacuum side or into the high-pressure side? Into the high-pressure side. Say that again? When you say some carbs utilize... Air flowing past the throttle plate. That's when the throttle plate is aimed right at that hole. Okay. Because the throttle plate's actually fatter than the hole. Sorry, throttle plate. Um, <laughs> and so the hole is kind of small, so it, it actually almost covers it. But we know that... the air going by there is creating a venturi effect because it is and it's drawing some fuel out probably venturi main okay yeah the, the fuel is vaporizing so is the space not right away well, not right away, but yeah. in the in the manifold, it's going to be taking up more space because it got back to the normal size of the venturi. Okay. Is the is the manifold designed for that, or like because wouldn't it be compressing the air a little bit? Maybe a little. We don't know. Okay. Yeah, that one. I, yeah, it's designed for it, of course. <laughs> like, it seems like it'd be compressing the air a little bit. What would you would you want that or not? Because if, if you're going from you're going from large to small, uh -huh. creating that's venturi, uh -huh. creating the suction, you're getting fuel out of that. Yeah. Then you're bringing back the same amount of matter to the right. same space. Yep. But more because there's fuel in it now. That's correct. So it's going to be a little compressed. About one part for every fifteen. Okay. <laughs> so it's not a lot. So would it be a little bit compressed? I think the mechanism causing the movement of air is different than what he's thinking. He's thinking like a compressor. Not like a compressor. I'm thinking like like the venturi. Uh, the reason the why the air is moving through is because there's a low vacuum in the ma manifold, lower yeah. even so than the venturi. The venturi is just designed at a specific size in order to create pressure that's differential from the from the cold pool. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. So keep that in mind. What's drawing it in is the low pressure. So yeah, but would that compensate for it? Is it comp is it one to one? That I don't or know. A little bit off. Sorry. It's deep theory, man. Sorry. I just fix them. That's your physics major. All the manufacturers. Just works. All the engineers. Yeah, you know what they say? How would I know that? All right, so the idle system contains what are some of my big, my major parts here? Well, one, we have the idle discharge nozzles. And they are drilled in the side of the throttle. throat, the throttle, the throttle body. Um, <coughs> a, B, just drilled passages. Uh, 
Um, maybe several. And we said some are above <coughs> the throttle plate. And some are above, some are below, and some are even with the throttle plate. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <laughs> so. so as throttle is opened, more holes <coughs> are exposed. And that gives you more fuel, right? And that's good because the throttle plate's opening. Want more fuel? Yeah. Don't think so. Some of these holes have a secondary purpose, and that is uncovered. Or uncovered holes, I should say, holes, holes below. That's below the throttle plate. May be used as air bleeds. So that hole down there below the throttle plate that you're thinking, well, in a little bit, the throttle plate's going to open up far enough to to start uncovering <coughs> that hole, and fuel's going to start coming out. Well. In the meantime, before that happens, this hole right here, because this pressure is higher than that right there, and it is open, what's going to come through here? Yeah. It's not going to just sit there. So air can actually go, can, it's designed so that this higher pressure air will come up through here, find its way through here, and out that way. Does that go through the second hole too? Uh, not if the second <coughs> hole is aligned, but if, if the throttle plate's above the second hole, then physics is going to, yeah, it's going to drag it right on through there. Say physics and then use the word drag it through. <laughs> the idle metering jet. Well, we had the main metering jet. And remember, the fuel for the idle system, actually, all of the fuel passes through the main <coughs> metering jet. But the main metering jet does absolutely no metering whatsoever of the idle system. Anybody know why? Well, the main metering jet is too big. Yeah, it's way too big. It's, it's like a McDonald's straw versus the little ones you stir your coffee with, right? I don't metering jet. What about it? Um, well, still need to still need to regulate the fuel. All right, so um, I don't metering jet. Um, so that just meters the fuel. We'll just say that meters. Idle fuel. Uh, what do we got here? Idle mixture adjustment. Well, we talked all Friday about the idle mixture adjustment. Um, so what can we say quickly about this? Use to adjust. Used to adjust what? What? That is correct. Used to adjust not the idle RPM. That is correct answer. <laughs> I like that. So what does it adjust? Idle mix. Yes, not the 
So let's use idle mixture. Okay. <coughs> Slightly rich of peak peak power, very good. Why? All right, so one theory is a rich mixture gives extra cooling. And what is my theory on that one? What's the, you got a, what's the theory? Well, you did the noise last time. What was the noise? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is that true? <laughs> Probably not. If it was true, then why would continental and light combing to tell you to pull the mixture aggressively lean on the ground right away? So I think that that is probably not true at all. Um, better theory is a rich mix um, is better for starting. Because aircraft carburetors do not have chokes. All right, slightly rich of peak power. How much rich of peak power? 50 RPMs. About 25 to 50 RPM. Okay, so procedure. <clears throat> Set idle speed and adjust idle mix. Kevin, there is a Q&A that says that it should be the other way around. Okay, so yes, and we talked about this on Friday. As a mechanic, I am never going to adjust the idle speed screw first because it's a waste of time because I'm probably going to have to go back and set it again. But you have to set, by set the idle speed, what I mean is either adjust it in the cockpit and lock the throttle or on the ground power unit we have, you have to adjust the screw, otherwise there's no uh, set way of holding it. it. It just moves around on you. So, so you do have to do it in the field on a real airplane, a little bit backwards. But you set it in the cockpit, we'll say. And it just it'll mix out about how much we set it back out? One and a half turns. Yeah, about one and a half turns. All right. Pull idle cutoff. That's the red knob. And engine should do what? Rise 25 to 50 RPM. Okay. Rise 25 to 50 RPM. And then die. Which carburetor will that work on? That's right. It will not work on the Stromberg. Now, interesting, this book right here, it tells you for the Stromberg to, uh, it, it mixes them up. And you almost have to know the carburetors better than the book at that point, so sorry about that. But it tells you to set the Stromberg for peak power, and then, then it starts talking about pulling out the idle mix and get a rise. Well, if it's a peak power, am I going to get a rise when I pull it out? Now, so it's a little, little error in there. So this works for the Stromberg. And this is why, uh, starting last year, I have all the classes actually take, the, sorry, the Marble Shoveler. I have you take the Marble Shoveler, and I had uh, a student in that class modify the ground power unit so we can actually put the Marble Shovelers on, and you can actually pull the idle mix and watch it happen. Uh, you can also do the same thing on your test uh, engine. So, all right, uh, so that's about it. We covered that. As a rule of thumb, you always move aircraft throttles slowly. You never jazz them. What happens if you 
jazz in the throttle like it's your rented Toyota. <laughs> it does what, Steve? There you go. You can, you can detune the crankshaft balancers. Well, that's okay. What happens if you detune the crankshaft uh, counterweights? It's an easy fix, right? What do you do? Buy a new one. Take the whole engine apart. And if it's a Continental, then you got to take the whole crankshaft apart. You have to send it out for NDT ultrasound because the service bulletins and ADs on that. And then you have to rebush everything and uh, then rebuild the engine. So I don't know what's that going to run. Probably not much more than uh, 20000 bucks, right? <laughs> so it's, yeah, I make that in a year. <laughs> okay, accelerating system. So I'm going to say all carbs. Need some way to facilitate rapid, carefully rapid throttle openings. So, all right, so you've got your nice Bonanza G36. And you're you're coming in to land somewhere, and you got the you're you're, you're coming in. You're you just just cleared the fence, got the numbers right there, and you're 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 starting your flare, and a deer jumps right out on the runway and kind of looks up at you. What is the last thing you're going to be thinking about at that point? <laughs> What's that? Slowly pushing. Slowly pushing the <laughs> throttle. That's the, dude, I don't want to detune, Mike. Because let me tell you something. You're really going to detune them when that. Prop hits that deer skull. So that's, uh, that's some detuning right there. So you are going to jam that throttle forward. Well, probably I picked the wrong airplane to discuss because the last thing in the world he has on his aircraft is a Stromberg or a Marvel Shebler. But um, you have your 172, that made more sense. So you jam this throttle forward, even your Piper Cub, uh, you gotta go. You're gonna push that throttle forward. And if you don't have some way <coughs> to add a sudden influx of fuel, what happens is the throttle opens up rapidly, it sucks the air up that it was the engine's been dying for and the fuel is kind of like, are we going now? Is everybody, we going now? Oh, now it's time to go. Well, now the air has gone through and so you ran lean, engine's gonna cough and sputter and lose all of its power and right at the time when you need it the most. So uh, carburetors need some way to facilitate a rapid throttle opening because rapid throttle openings do happen. So we have two, two systems really. Break it down to <laughs> And the first type is an accelerating well. Nope. Oh, that one. I actually want the pan. All right, so in the idle, when we're running an idle right here, we have fuel, so I'm gonna go back to this drawing because this one's not idle, but fuel comes through. Whoops, I gotta do this. There we go. That uh, better? Okay, so fuel comes through here. And what's that? You're too right when you said that you went into the red. Yeah. Oh, well, well, you saw it then, didn't you? <laughs> you knew it was in the red. All right, so fuel, fuel is coming through here. Um, it's coming in through here, and then it hits uh, this point right here, and it's actually, at this point, it's coming off to another side. We just can't see that view, and it's running up here through the idle system. So all of this right here is pretty much just stagnant right now. It's just, the whole thing is full. And so if we look at it over here, it's gonna be full from this point all the way through, all the way through here, all of this is down to here, is pretty much just full of fuel, just sitting there, not doing much of anything. And when the carburetor in, in this configuration, during full throttle, this is all air going through here, through here and around there. So all of, this air, all of these air pockets are filled up with fuel when it's over here in the idle system. That's your accelerating well. So when I rapidly open the throttle, what's gonna happen is all of this fuel that's been stored right here is going to be readily available 
to go out the discharge nozzle, give it a rich mixture, and thus the accelerating well. Not really complicated, is it? Yeah. I would assume not. You're going to have that problem because you don't. You don't have an air blade. Uh, let's see. Simply a reservoir of extra fuel between the main metering jet. discharge nozzle. Even though I write that, it's not 100% accurate because there's parts of the system in at least the Stromberg where the main metering jet um, is actually part of the idle circuit. Extra fuel is drawn out when throttle is opened. Um, giving extra fuel, <coughs> which I said at the top, so I guess they need to be say that. All right, the other type, uh, actually, before I move on with that, uh, so if I'm off the idle circuit and I rapidly open the throttle, is this accelerator system there and is it going to work? Nope. And if I go from full throttle to part throttle, is it going to reset itself? No. So the only way I see that it resets itself is I go back to, idle. back to idle and then you have it again. And then as soon as you open it, it's gone. The other type is an actual accelerating pump. Let's see if we can find a picture of an accelerating pump. There we go, this kind of works. This is the MA45. So we actually have, and this is a very good uh, representation right there. Doesn't like to stick on laser. Uh, exactly what it looks like. So inside of the carburetor, there is a, uh, a space in the float chamber that has a little check valve and <coughs> fuel is allowed to come up. Well, in this case, it comes up through here, through the check valve, fills this up. And when we are in idle, this is up. And as I jam on the throttle, it's going to force this lever down. But, well, it's going to force this lever down and force fuel out through here. But this is a very tiny little hole. So if you didn't have some provision for it, you almost get a hydraulic lock right here. And you can't advance the throttle any faster than you can spray fuel out of here. That would be a problem, wouldn't it? So they put it on a big spring. So I can jam the throttle forward. This is going to come down, but the spring will push this down as fast as it can go. Meanwhile, I've already opened this up because that's the most important. So we open that up. Um, this has a little leather packing with, uh, with the spring. So that's exactly how the accelerator pump works. So it's a positive, almost, almost a positive displacement pump, you could say. Uh, this is also a check valve because it's important that when you go back to idle, same thing, you got to go back to idle to reset it. You go back to idle, this pulls itself back up. You want fuel to be sucked through here and not air this way. So you have to put a little check valve there that keeps the air from going that way and allows the fuel in. When you push it down, this little ball has to block this off, otherwise you just blow fuel back up in here because this is much easier. That's why you have two little check valves. Accelerating pump. Uh, what do we say about that?
positive displacement. Pump. That injects fuel through a separate nozzle. Throttle is rapidly opened. And this one has to reset at idle? Well, not so much at idle. Every time you pull the throttle back, that little cut moves up a little bit. So if you move the throttle back a little bit, the cut moves up a little bit. Um, what was <coughs> Sorry, you, but you do get fuel every time that you do push to accelerate. Well, in theory, mm -hmm. you kind of do, except this little space right here, you can actually have a little, it depends on the style. Um, I don't think the Marvel shovelers are going to do this because they're sealed pretty dang well. But uh, some of them actually allow a little fuel to escape around here. So if you're opening the throttle slowly, it can actually just allow the throttle, the fuel to escape around here and not inject it. So it just depends on how well this cup or seal forms around. But Kevin, if yeah. that seal is tight and the throttle is advanced slowly, uh -huh. it would slowly flow back. If this is really tight, uh -huh. then it's going to come out this way. But it's not going to be much of a difference. Because uh, it's going to run rich. It's going to run rich. Got a little check valve bottom as far as I can see that it would only open actually at the moment when you release the throttle right this one yeah because you need some vacuum or whatever yes in order to actually let fuel in yes as this is pulled back up uh -huh. this check valve will open right. and this one will close Now, if we think about it, which I am, um, on this system, what if I open the throttle slowly? You still got to evacuate all the fuel out of here. Just, even if you go slow, you still got to get rid of all that fuel. It's got to go somewhere. So, all right, accelerator pump, let's see. But the, but the pressure wouldn't be different on a rapidly advanced and a slow advance, the, the pressure that that uh, plunger would impose on the fuel? Yeah, so what you can do, uh, not everybody is going to get a marble shoveler with an accelerating pump. Some are getting some with, some without, but you can always experiment when somebody's on the, on the car bench. Um, if, you, as you, if you open the throttle quick, it'll spray up like this high or more, uh, but if you open it real slow, you can see that not a lot comes out of the discharge nozzle. It's pretty minimal. And the other thing is, uh, all these things I'm thinking of here. You don't want this to be drawing fuel out. So you do need a little bit of spring pressure on here, that this spring pressure is more than this drawing out right here. Otherwise, it's just going to start drawing fuel out, just like it's a discharge nozzle. It doesn't know any different. So you do have to have that check valve with the spring strong enough to keep that closed so it only opens when you have actual pressure being pushed from the accelerating pump. Can you check the tension of, or the, check those springs at any point or vent nails or anything? There's a, there is a check on the Marvel. It's actually the, that, uh, Check valve you can take take out. And there's a check you can do on it. So if throttle is opened slow, fuel and pump is bypass. In theory. around the plunger. OK, 
Okay, it can be used to prime an engine. And you know, we talked about that, I think, on Friday. So if the engine, if you're actually cranking it over, and I quickly accelerate the throttle while I'm just running it on the starter, the engine's not running, right? And when I quickly advance the throttle and pull it back, what do I do? I'm spraying that fuel right up in there. It's using the accelerator pump and squirting a, a richer mixture in there. So you can do that. Can I do that on a Stromberg? With, or can I do that on an accelerator well style? No. Yeah, good luck. Nope. Nope. Not at all. All right. That brings me to the economizer systems. What other name is given to economizer systems? Yes. What's AKA mean? <coughs> also known as. Also known as power. Power enrichment. All right. And as I explained, if we take a look at a chart, and this is rich, and this is lean, and this is idle, and this is wide open throttle, the carburetor is going to be designed one way or another to start very rich at, at idle, work its way down smoothly, work its way down, and in the mid-range, um, say between here and here's cruise, it's going to be reasonably lean. And once we get out of cruise, it's going to start going back up. So this is going to be, I'm just making up some numbers, about 75% power. <coughs> so after 75% power, it's going to start getting rich. And it's going to go right back up to a rich setting. And that's the way the carburetor should be designed. So why do we have, say this is idle. Why do we have it rich again at idle? For starting. For, probably for starting. Yeah, because I don't buy into the whole cooling thing at, at, because of the reasons, because reasons, as KV says. All right, and then why do I want it rich over here once I get past 75%? Detonation. <laughs> okay, detonation and cooling. and cooling. So now we really are talking about cooling. So yes, detonation and cooling. Um, then why why here? Why is it so low here? Yeah, that's where you spend most of your time. Okay, I spend most of my time and so you don't burn all your fuel before you get to where you're going. Okay, what about my whole detonation cooling issue? You don't need, you don't need to worry about it. Yeah, you don't need to worry about it here. So the carburetor is designed to do this one way or another. Now, as I said the other day, the carburetor may be designed to take what Colors. Need colors. Maybe the carburetor was designed to run right here in, in richness. And the carburetor is going to do something to drop it down. All right? I would like to call that an economizer, but it, that's just me. Right? Or maybe the carburetor was designed blue to operate right here, and the carburetor automatically enriches it. I would love to call that a power enrichment, because those things make sense to me. If it leans it out, that should be called an economizer. It economized the carburetor, made it more economical. Uh, if it was already economical, and there was something in it that added extra fuel, then I would call that a power enrichment. That's not the way it works. They may call this system down here that automatically enriches it an economizer, and they may call this system that economizes it a power enrichment. So those terms are used back and forth. That's not the point. Um, should be. But the point is that the carburetor is going to do this, and there's going to be something in there that's either going to economize it or enrich it. So you just have to look and see which one, what is my carburetor doing? And it may very well say, this carburetor has a power enrichment. And you go, awesome, but you know what? It economizes it. So now you know, that's, those are my terms used that way, 
Carburetor terms, they just say, we have an economizer, and this one says we have a power enrichment. And it's like, well, how does it work? Well, our power, power enrichment works like an econ Kevin's economizer, and it's back and forth. So you don't just go off the wording. You have to kind of figure out what, how it works. Um, so regardless of the name or the color of the pen, Regardless of the name, um, it enriches the mixture, or it causes the mixture to the mixture to get richer uh, above above cruise power, which is say sixty to seventy percent. Why do we want that? It can, it needs room for cooling. Okay, good. So keeps the mixture, I'll just say mix, keeps the mix at cruise from being too rich and adds extra fuel at high power settings and why um, cooling and anti-knock anti okay or detonation and there are four types and I will tell you about those four types tomorrow. Is there a mechanism that's actually... Don't go away mad. <laughs> Just go, go away. away.